Hey Tio Tears, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video that I've made for you. Uh, I It's actually a re-record of the video that I did the other day. Um, I know that some of you noticed that I posted a video and then had to take it down just because the audio was garbage on it. It was a hot mess. So uh, I am re-recording it now and um, let's go ahead and take a look at it. But before we do, um, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button and the notification button so you get notified of every new video that we put out. Uh, and so without further ado, let's just go ahead and take a look at it. Okay, so we're taking a look at OpenSUSE Leap 15.5. That's right, the LTS version of OpenSUSE. Uh, right now, I am using this on my actual ThinkPad T530. Um, I've been up for about an hour. I have 2,664 RPM packages and 20 flat packs installed. It uses Bash 4.4. We're using the XFCE 4.18 version and the XFCE Window Manager. Um, it uses a Greybird Geeko window manager theme and the theme is a graybird geeko dark which is a gtk2 and slash three theme uh the adwita, X, adwita xfce is the icons in the terminal that it uses as a standard xfce for terminal um and uh it is i'm using an intel i 73520 mobile quad core on my laptop and i'm using nvidia nvs 5400m that's right this is a potato-ish laptop so there is a look at that so let's go ahead and clear this out and let's take a look at htop which i installed on here and so let's make this nice and big for you guys and i'll even increase the font for you so you guys can see i'm using at 1.75 gigahertz uh, uh great gigs of ram not gigahertz and as you can see my processors are getting pegged pretty hard by obs running in the background which is down here at the very bottom plus i've got a terminal opening open so it's reading and doing sensors right now so that's going to be using some resources as well so let's go ahead and close out of that and we're going to close that out so now we're greeted with this this is a standard xfce desktop right here which you with what you know i downloaded um it has it's a light lightweight look and feel just like any uh, xfce uh videos folder i put on here but these other ones outside of the steam steam is on here from from my install that i did but the, it comes with the root fest the trash can the file system the home and the actual mounted volume uh, of hard drive on here on the desktop uh you've got your dock at the bottom or your panel at the bottom which is actually not the standard for xfce xfce standard the panels at the top um so that is something that they've done for this uh your application launcher of course this is what it looks like um it's got your standard applications we'll go through those real quickly in a minute um no, i don't want to bore you with the details but it's a lot of the standard packages that you'll find in there and we'll talk about the package manager that is something else um so uh either way uh there's that on the left hand side then you got your like say you have a window open so let's go here let's open up a terminal next to that is um desktop it clears your desktop and minimizes everything and, and clears your desktop so you can just see your desktop right away uh then next to that you've got your two actual virtual uh uh, uh desktop environments right here workspaces you got workspace one and workspace two next to that you got your tray which has your volume indicator your battery status indicator you can see that i'm using obs you got your bluetooth indicator your wi-fi indicator and of course your package update indicator which is saying that i have some software to update and then of course you've got your calendar right here and then next to that is your notifications you click on it you'll have notifications you can also turn on your do not disturb so very nice um i know that uh open is in the commercial uh side the enterprise side of things too and so uh this is their desktop non-commercial side and i think that the reason why they put the panel at the bottom is because they're trying to kind of get that windows xp-7 uh slash maybe windows 10 vibe going on so that you know people have some familiarity with it that may be switching over from windows so i think that's why they put the panel at the bottom don't quote me on that it's just 
something I'm spitballing on. Now, as far as applications, you got your favorites at the top, which these are the ones that I put in there. It's really simple. You go here, you right click on this, and you add to favorites right here. And then guess what? It's in your favorites. Now you can just drag it to where you want in your favorites. So that's very nice to do. Uh, recently used of programs that we've recently used. Then you've got accessories, which has got like Adam that's in there. I installed the catfish file search, um, your mouse pad, which is their actual text editor, which kind of is redundant because this is also in the system to category. But either way, under development, you got Adam and then they got Git GUI. So as you can tell, that's more for production um, with enterprise level, maintaining packages, coding, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, system maintainers, that kind of stuff uses. So um, that explains why that would be there. Um, under uh, uh, education, they've got LibreOffice Math, which leads me to believe that they've got LibreOffice installed as their software suite. Uh, games, of course, Zero AD, Steam, both of which I added. There were none on here. Graphics um, the of notable mention is going to be your GIMP and your Risotto Viewer, which is a standard XFCE um, photo imager. Um, and then you've got Shotwell, which is your screen uh, recorder and screenshot taker. Uh, if your internet is concerned, it came with Firefox. I added Discord, KDE, Connect, came with the Mail Reader and Pigeon. Uh, also, Remina, Remote Viewer, Steam, Thorium, I added, Thorium Shell, I added, Thunderbird was there, Tiger VNC Viewer and Transmission were there, and also their web browser. Um, for multimedia, you have um Caden Live I installed it came with Praga Parole Media Player um Pulse Audio I got rid of Parole and I kept Praga and Pulse Audio I added to VLC because VLC is a Swiss Army knife of media player tools it's all you need and you can do whatever you want with it uh, as far as Caden Live that's an editor that, that I use for editing videos OBS Studio is what we record in and then on Zadora here now Zadora fun fact um, Steve over at Zero Linux has written a script that will automatically well not automatically but it will install and set up a container of your choice on DistroBox. So um, this is a, a Zadora is what it calls the Fedora container when he when he installs it. So that's what that is. Um, as far as um, uh, uh, Office is concerned, it's got LibreOffice, you got other, you got TLT Arch, which is an Arch container that I put on, and then you got Zadora and you got the, uh, the actual Fedora Zadora. For settings, um, you got your standard settings in here, which is your uh, like, you know, um what you call it uh, xfce standard appearance and your color profile then your default applications uh display kde settings uh kde connect settings i mean uh you can edit the menus but just all kinds of different things you can do in here i mean take your time browse through them lots of good ones anything that's really like the window manager tweaks that's pretty cool um you can do what you want with that uh yast is also a suite of tools that we'll take a look at specifically because it is fantastic um as far as system is concerned of course things not mentioned h top we looked at you got your bulk renamer you got gnome discs installed like g uh, light dm gtk uh, greeter settings uh you got the task manager which is just like system monitor on everything else um xfce terminal we got the welcome thing you got yeah the welcome uh tool then you've got the yes software um which if you open it up um we'll open it up real quickly and we'll take a look at it And what YAS software does is it's kind of like Octopi or Synaptic Package Manager for Debian. Um, yeah, it's basically where you can search up an application or a software that you want to install. You tick the box that says install, and then you go down to the bottom right corner and you apply it, and it'll install the program. Um, right now, it, it updates every time you open it. It doesn't matter if you open it up once, twice, three times a day. It still downloads and updates all the package manager every time. It doesn't keep anything locally, I guess. I, I you know, I don't know. Uh, why it doesn't do a check and say yeah okay we've already done it once because i fired this up once already and so it, and it takes it as you can tell a little bit and that is a big knock that i have with open um as you can tell the title of the video is open susa maybe a maybe yes maybe no for me it's a no absolute no uh it is as you can see that package manager took forever to load forever to load like you click search here you type in here and say g edit 
right? Hit enter. It's searching, and I mean, it searched those packages really quick. Why does it take so long to inst to, to download the damn repo? Uh, and then you hit down here. You tick it like yeah, right here. You can click install. Then you hit accept down here, and it'll install it. I am not going to do it because this package manager is slow as hell. Zipper is horrible. Um, it is horrible. Um, yes, I do want to abandon all damn changes. Uh, that is by far the worst thing about OpenSUSE is a package manager. Now, what I'm going to say as a PSA is you can speed it up. And the way to do that is go into the actual zipper config file. And if you scroll down, you'll see just like you do in Arch, there's parallel downloads. It's commented out. It's already set to five. Arch comes with it already enabled and set to five. Why do they not just uncomment it and at least set it to five? It'll speed it up a lot more than what it is. And then, of course, you could add 20, go up to 20 on that, and you'll be skyrocketing, which is what I did. I mean, I, I shouldn't have to do that for something like that, especially if you took the time to put it in the config file. If you put it in a config file, just leave it uncommented. There's a reason why you put parallel downloads in there, and you enumerated it at five. You gave it the value. So why why would you un, why would you comment it out? That literally makes no sense to me, none whatsoever. Especially if you knew that you had to speed it up. That's why you put it in there. It, it makes no sense. But either way, I'm not trying to like completely bash on this but i'm telling you right now open is a no for me it's a hot mess on a couple other things um the other thing about the package manager which it uses zipper as i said and zipper is just like app the same kind of syntax to use it you know uh, sudo zipper install and then package name or remove for package name uh and you know yada 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 uh so at, at any instance the other thing um is that the package management that they can curate for OpenSUSE surprisingly is not complete. Like a standard thing that a lot of people like um, OBS is not in their package in a regular standard repo. You actually have to download an add-on repo. Uh, well, not repo, but actually it's like a, a helper um, for AUR. It's similar to to the AUR. Uh, it's it's called OPI, and that is in the actual repo for the standard packages, which maybe Arch should take you know note for that and put Yay and Peru in their actual. Uh, well, at least, yeah, I'm, I think Peru may be in there. I'm not sure. But either way, put those in the actual package manager so you can actually access the AUR. But either way, this is not an Arch video. This is actually an OpenSUSE video. And the truth is, is OPI is where it's at. If you are going to jump to OpenSUSE and try OpenSUSE, then this is what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to enable the OPI repository to get extra packages um, added onto here that may make your life more bearable on OpenSUSE than just the standard vanilla packages they have in their repo. So that's it. Rant over about their crappy package manager, Zipper. Um, but other than that, um, OpenSUSE is just that. It is pretty much so Linux in and of its shell. Now, I want to focus a little bit on Yast in this video. Yast is by far the Swiss Army knife complete suite of tools to do anything with your software. Um, in fact, that's what Yast stands for, yet another software tool. And in it, you have, to mention, for one, you can actually create virtual machines in here. And when you click on it, it will actually set up Vert Manager in here with QEMU and KVM already done for you. That's really sweet. Yast should be on every Linux software out there. I think that should be an, a tool that they just automatically say, yep, we got to put it in here. Um, it's got system log. Uh, it's got, you can add on products. Um, it's got the Yast app armor tool, you know, um, that you can actually, which is for security. Uh, they got alternatives. You can do bootloaders. You can do date and time. They can do all kinds of stuff. The one other cool ass thing that it has in here is the Yast file system snapshots, which you can access at boot by by going in and booting into safe mode, and then it allows you to come into the YAS file system tool snapshots, and you can actually roll back your system. 
or drop down into a ter TTY ter um, terminal and access it that way. Uh, and you, you can launch it and run it and roll back. Um, you can also, uh, with this, you can manage your software, which you're taking a look at. You can do um, check any kind of media that you put in or install. You got your um, NTP configurations. Uh, you can do your online update for yes as well. Also, you got a partitioner tool. I mean, it's a complete suite of tools. If there is an, if you can't find what you need in this tool to do whatever it is that you need to, I mean, you can look, yes, window domain membership. I mean, you, you, then I don't know what you need to do. Oh, this, um, this tool right here, the um, vendor driver tool. If you have a piece of hardware that you're installing that came with an actual a driver CD, you install, you launch this, put your driver CD in, and it'll find a driver off of there and compile it for you. Um, pretty, pretty cool. Uh, you can actually edit services. You can do its own security center. It's got firewalls. It's even got a Samba server you can set up. I mean, it's just all, got all kinds of stuff in here. I mean, it's it's a complete tool. Take some time. If anything, if you install OpenSUSE, if for nothing else. It's for YAS. Just check out YAS, man. It's pretty badass. Um, and so that is actually a complete look at the actual software I've mentioned that's in here. Everything else is standard. Um, the panel, like I said, you know, it is what it is. It's a standard XSC panel, app launcher here. Time and date, notifications over here, do not disturb. Also, everything else is what it is. So that, in a nutshell, is a look at OpenSUSE Leap 15.5. And so that's really... All I've got to say about OpenSUSE, I mean, it's it's fantastic. It it is a great distribution as far as like if you want to, you know, like maybe visit the internet or something like that. But as far as production concern of any kind, doing any content, no, it's not for you, man. Uh, at least for me, it wasn't. That's why it's a thumbs down. Um, also, if you can bear their package manager being as slow as it is, that's great. More power to you. I think I know why a lot of people that are on OpenSUSE like DistroBox is because DistroBox is the only saving grace for it. Now, yes, DistroBox is a saving grace for any distribution. If there's an application that you really, really enjoy from one app, you know, distribution that isn't found normally on that on the one that you're on right now, DistroBox is the way to go. You can actually install it. You can export the app. You can launch it, run it. Beautiful. Life's great. And I, I find that you probably wind up spending more time in DistroBox on OpenSUSE than most other distributions. Uh, at least that's been my experience. And it was buggy for me on those things other than that hey guys it wasn't for me maybe for you give it a try like i said if nothing else do it for the ass until then i'll tell you what i always tell you y'all stay safe keep on links and keep doing what you do stay safe and above all i'll see you in the very next video and that's a wrap